But let's talk about Zip and then I'll come back to like the career stuff because sure. what you've said about showing your work, I mean, that's opened so many doors for you and bought you, uh, I don't want to give it away, red things. Let's leave it at that. So let's talk about the Zip episode, if you like. Yeah, it's the perfect case where there's absolutely no personality and only code involved because I, that's something I had written at home and was selling as a shareware product. And just for some backstory, before that, you would use command line tools to unpack a Zip and then WinZip would come out a couple of years around the same time, maybe a couple of years later. But we're looking for a way, or I was looking for a way to learn the new Shell API, which allows you to host uh, different things within a Shell folder, such as you can have control panel applets yeah. or files or different things to be hosted in it. So I thought, what if I was to take a zip file, parse the internal structure, and then expose that as a folder hierarchy that you could just browse through and grab the file you wanted? It seemed to fit in really well with the new Shell paradigm. So I went about writing that and then got it finished and it was called Visual Zip. I was selling it as shareware and I was selling maybe a dozen copies a day, something like that at the time. And I was leaving for work one morning and I got a call from a lady at Microsoft. She said, are you the, are you Dave Plummer? And I said, yes. And she said, did you write Visual Zip? And I said, yes. Or she probably called it. Yeah, she just called Visual Zip. Um, and I said, yeah. She said, well, we'd like to talk to you about an acquisition of buying it to include in Windows. And we will, you know, have you come in and talk about it. And I was like, great. What building are you in? I'll be right over. She's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, you got to talk to Microsoft legal and travel and all this. And I was like, totally confused because why well, I already worked there. Why would I have to go to see the legal department to come to your building? And that's when we figured out neither one of us knew that she didn't know that I didn't or that I worked at Microsoft already. And she had just cold called the author of this piece of software to see who owned it and it turned out to be me. So uh, once it's your own company that you're negotiating with and you've got a stipulation clause that you can't compete with them anyway, you're kind of stuck in a bad position where you take whatever offer you get. And that's kind of what I did. So I took their first only and best offer and I bought a uh, used 94 Corvette at the time with it. So I had that for a long time and that was my visuals at Mobile. But I mean, the story is from what I've, you know, sort of the thread through your story is you love coding uh, and development. You, you wrote the stuff on the side and a lot of the tools that we use today exists because you did this on the side and it opened doors for you. Yeah, it sure did open doors for me. That's certainly true. The fact or to the extent that other people find the stuff I've written for myself useful, I mean, I love that. But it wasn't necessarily an attempt to write something that everybody would find useful so much as write something that I really think would be useful. And then luckily other people find it so as well. 